So, for instance, if you have a, uh, a property, then you know the property uh, and you, you're responsible for it. It's your, it's your, your child in a way. You're, you're responsible. So it's your kuleana. And, and I brought that up in terms of uh, your kuleana, which is that you've been studying biological systems in, in terms of climate change. And so that gives you not just the the knowledge, but it gives you the responsibility, the authority and the responsibility for sharing with others uh, mm. what you see. I think one of the big challenges we face is exactly this, as you mentioned, the, the space between knowing what's happening and really acting on it. And there seems to be a big gap. So people have a lot of information um, and now, how to work with it and i think when we when we understand the impacts of what's happening it, it does make a difference because in the bigger context humans are bigger than letting this happen truly we have great people amongst our species we've got people like nelson mandela and gandhi and malala and we're all descendants of great pioneers and explorers otherwise we wouldn't be here so we have it in us to do the kinds of things that make big changes to bear a bit of discomfort and inconvenience for a bigger vision for, for our principles. And I see that we can move through this. I see a lot of shifts, particularly in younger generations, who are becoming very principled and, and responsible in the way that they behave. And so I'm, that, that encourages me. So for example, in, in Cape Town, we've had a a serious crisis around water. There just isn't enough water for everybody who's here and climate change has exacerbated that situation. So we've been living for about five months now with the threat of day zero being anything up to a month away until the taps turn off. And that's day just zero. Water. What is day zero? Day zero, yes, when they switch the taps off. Oh. There is no more water in the taps. And um, it's a, quite a terrifying prospect because everybody then lands up standing in queues all day for a little bit of water um, and the whole of our society um, kind of has to stop. How, how close to day zero is, is Cape Town? I mean, is it actually a month away or? It was um, in, in February and March and now it's extended out. Luckily, we've just hit our wet season. So now we're all keeping fingers crossed that we actually have a good one. But even with a good one, we may not get our dams full enough. We almost certainly won't to, um, to, to survive the next dry season. Given the fact that um, people tend to uh, rise up when there are extreme hardships, uh, mm. food prices go high and you get food riots, um, how soon do you think it, it, it will be before the impacts of climate change actually create that kind of social unrest that would cause severe political impacts? Well, we've been within a month of it. Mm. Day zero. Um, that's when, I mean, I, I know that some of the major food retailers were requested by the, the, the city to please endeavor to keep their doors open. And they said, we actually can't because our staff may need to be standing in queues for water or being with their children who are home from school because the schools were closed, the university were closed. Um, so that means there's no food. That means maybe there's not even any banks. That means, and, and of course, we're all standing in waters, in queue for water. And, and that's assuming that distribution of water is equitable and fair and and, and is done in, in a way that isn't uh, manipulatable, um, already that society falling down, that's our civilization eroding. I that's, see that's interesting. Problems. That's quite interesting because 
when you when you first said that they may turn off the taps, I was thinking, oh, okay, they're going to you know, six hours a day or something. No. Finished. Nothing. N toilets not flushing. I mean, the disease risk is huge. So they they don't have a plan for going on on uh, uh, rationing or I mean, like you hear about countries where they'll say, okay, we have electricity on for six hours a day, so do everything you need for those. In those mm. six hours, but it's not going to go like that. So they've already done that. We're already in the most extreme rationing, where if you go over um, your quota, you pay, pay enormous amounts for that water. But they can't switch the taps on and off because of the pressure situations; they'll burst. So they can't do that. Um, so once they switch them off, when they ever switch them on again, there's that there'll be enormous problems over the city. So it's a disaster to have to switch them off. I'm glad we're going into this in in depth. Uh, because examining the modalities by which societies are fragile is something that people don't do. I mean, we assume mm. every day we turn on the switch and the light is going to come on and um, we open the faucet and there's going to be water there. But you're talking about a system where if they must shut it down, they can't shut it down because they can't turn it on easily. Um, but I mean, they have no choice to shut it down because there just isn't water. I've, I've, I've been to the dam. It's, it, there's nothing in it. So we, we've living like that, that there we know there is not enough water. And it's resulted in a serious behavioral shift. Pretty much everyone I know um, talks at, all the time and at dinner parties and everywhere um, about all the different ways we save water. It's become a bit of a, like a kind of badge of honor as to how good you are at saving water. Um, and we've just all switched on to all the ways in which we use it and we're aware of it. And so it becomes, yeah, fun and innovative and challenging to, to use less water. We can do it. And, and, and that happened really quickly. And it, it really hasn't made our lives much worse at all. Do you think people can make the shift in from saving water to uh, saving fossil fuels? Absolutely. Especially when we've got renewable technology that make that easier. Um, you can't really make water as easily as you can make electricity out of sunlight and water and you know water energy and, and other forms. So so yes, and I think uh, technology, uh, the developments and innovations um, in renewables are fantastic and offer us some good solutions. Well, solutions are perhaps not not the right word because I'm not sure it's going to fix the problem, but it certainly helps to address it. Mm -hmm.